Hey guys, what's up? My name's The Cool Mike and welcome back with another video. But today I won't be playing a game, but I'm going to be telling you guys why I love D&D or why I love Dungeons and Dragons. So, first up, if you guys don't know what Dungeons and Dragons is, Dungeons and Dragons is a very popular uh board game. Basically, there's a dungeon master or a DM and there are players or characters that will be uh playing the game with the dungeon dungeon master. Uh, the dungeon master serves as the narrator for the game or the one that uh, lays out the story and the challenges that the characters or the players have to pass or have to face in order to beat the what you call the adventure. Uh, basically, uh, it's a basically a role playing uh, what you call role playing board game. Uh, whether it involves figurines, which I don't currently have, but it also involves dice, which I actually bought a lot of um, stuff, a lot of these things. Uh, there's a bunch of dice. Uh, there's the uh, there's different types of dice basically, and I have at least a handful of it. Uh, as you guys can see, different colors and a handful. But uh, basically, uh, you roll a dice, and uh, depending, uh, it's a decision-making game. Depending on the character's choice, how to what you call continue with the story, and the dungeon ma the, the, the dungeon master has to lay out the rules, and the stories, the storylines, and the challenges, and the NPCs. It's pretty. It's pretty much like playing um, what you call um, I forgot what it's called. Uh, those type of games it's really it's like playing Skyrim basically uh, it's like playing those uh, adventure games like Skyrim and uh, what you call Dark Souls but basically there's a story in the game and the dungeon master is the one portraying the story and uh, trying to narrate the story while the characters are the one to be uh, the the characters represents us the heroes uh, of the story to beat the what you call dungeon masters uh, with adventure so basically uh, you roll dice and if you get uh, I'm not sure it depends on every dungeon master but if you get 10 or lower that's pretty bad that means you fail in the roll uh, there's a lot of rules I, I don't even have the book but I have the PDF form on my phone of all the rules and all the things that you need to do and, uh, and then there's uh, if you roll 11 to 20 that means you succeed in a roll depending on the uh, what you call the difficulty of the number so uh, which the dungeon master uh, decides so basically it's a role-playing game it's like playing this uh, RPG type of games where it's like Skyrim there are dragons there are orcs there are ghosts and monsters and the heroes have to kill those things or what you call pass a certain quest in an adventure depending on the dungeon master's choice so pretty much that's it that's what Dungeons and Dragons is and it's complicated at first but when once you uh, what what you once you watch other people play you get the hang of it and you understand bit by bit of all the what you call <coughs> of all the uh, of how it works and how it is played basically I didn't even know Dungeons and Dragons uh, before I started uh, playing or at least uh, watching other people play it on the internet I didn't know that Dungeons and Dragons existed I I've heard of it I've heard that it's a cartoon a TV series cartoon back in the early 90s or early 2000s but I never actually knew that it was based from a video game or no based from a board game which now it's in its 5 edition or 5e so there's the first second third and fourth edition and now there's the fifth edition which means the rules have changed and there's more things to it than the what you call the uh, there's more added uh, features to it so basically it's a board game and uh, you just have to roll dice and role play pretty much. Uh, it sounds boring at first but uh, I actually find it interesting. And like I said, b even bef uh, before I knew or fell in love with the board game itself or the what you call... Um, before I fell in love with the, what you call the actual board game or the actual type of a game called Dungeons and Dragons before I fell, up, fell in love with the theme 
of this actual board game. Uh, I didn't know Dungeons and Dragons was actually a board game. I didn't know it existed. All I know it was a 90s cartoon. Um, and um, and then I started watching YouTube videos. Uh, I was just uh, you know watching people play video games. And then suddenly on the side of my screen there was this uh, uh, what you call on the side of my screen there was uh, w on the uh, on the side of my video there was this uh, recommended videos that uh, YouTube recommends for you that you might enjoy watching one of which was uh, uh, what you call one of which was a Dungeons and Dragons campaign which was a very popular one called I didn't know it back then uh, it was this happened two years ago I think two to three years ago uh, this was Critical Role and uh, the episode that uh, was shown on the side of my screen was uh, Critical Role episode 44, The Sunken Tomb, if I'm not mistaken. So that's the title. Uh, Critical Role, uh, here it is. That's the picture. Critical Role episode 44, The Sunken Tomb. Uh, basically, Critical Role is, if you guys didn't know, is a bunch of uh, nerdy voice actors sit around roll dice and play Dungeons Dragons. So basically, they're not only they all not only have they don't only love the game, but they're actually good at it because they're voice actors. So when they're per uh, role playing and portraying their characters, it actually is good because you know they are professionals, considering that they're voice actors for video games and movies. So that's really cool, and I love that. Uh, I love I love how that works. And at first, I didn't know what it was because, like I said, I didn't know what Dungeons and Dragons is. I didn't know it was a board game, and I I was looking for some things to watch, and I I just saw this picture of this young man and woman side to side sitting together, and I just real uh, and then. Uh, later, after watching the whole thing, I not uh, I now I know that the two these two people were the some, were some of the main characters in the actual campaign, which is Vexeldan and Vexalia, uh, which are twin uh, what you call um, half elves, twin half elves. Uh, they're twins and they're half elves uh, as the characters in uh, this campaign. And uh, it, it was, if you guys didn't know what happened in this episode, uh, if you guys uh, didn't know what Critical Role is, I, wa I recommend you guys watch it. It's really amazing. Uh, I love the story. I love the characters. I love every single bit of it. Uh, all, I think now they have a campaign too, which is Critical, uh, Critical Role campaign too, but I still prefer the first one because the first one was amazing. Uh, I don't mind the second one. The second one is still great, but I still prefer the first one. The first one was just amazing. Uh, considering that uh, the Dungeon Master, which is Matt Mercer, another voice actor, was is really good at storytelling. And it's really good at how he, you know, create a story for the cat for the, for his characters. So uh, I watched it, and if you guys didn't know what happened in this episode, spoiler alert! Uh, if you haven't watched it. Uh, crit uh, episode 44 of Critical Role, which is the Sunken Tomb, uh, basically one of the main characters, one of the main character dies, uh, which is Vexalia, uh, I believe, uh, which was the female on the picture that you just saw. Uh, yeah, the female, oh wait, there, the female that the picture that you just saw, it's her. Uh, she's the girl in the picture that, and her character died in the story or in the campaign and his, her twin brother which is Vaxeldan, the one uh, standing uh, beside her on the picture, uh, basically uh, had to rescue her by sacrificing himself to a, to a what you call death goddess so that she will be resurrected. So basically, um, basically uh, uh, for some reason it worked and her character got res uh, Vexalia which was the main character one of the main characters got resurrected because her twin brother made a deal with this uh, death goddess which what which is called the Raven Queen so it was actually amazing and um, pretty much that's what happened uh, they uh, basically there are figurines there are miniatures and there's a map every time you battle so yeah, it was a fun episode. It, uh, so I recommend you guys watch that because I really did enjoy watching it. And I, uh, the only problem is 
it, the episodes are very long and I don't mind I don't really care if it was long or short because I prefer it to be long to be honest because you get to enjoy it even more but obviously um, if you have no time watching hours and hours every day because there's at least a hundred fifteen episodes on the first campaign and each episode is like two three to four hours long sometimes five so that's a long long time I think there's at least over uh, over eight to nine hundred hours no not really but uh, yeah at least eight to nine hundred somewhere around that it's, it's at least uh, no at least uh, well not eight to nine hundred hours but at least uh, what you call two a hundred to two hundred hours of uh, non-stop uh, episodes of this actual show it's like a show from Netflix and if you're hearing barking in the background I'm really sorry about that so uh, that's that uh, now let's get to the gist of it why I love Dungeons and Dragons and D&D so basically I love the aspect of it's it's a role-playing board game so basically um, it's a role-playing game so basically you get to choose a character like an RPG game you get to choose a role or a type of character whether if you want to be a barbarian a wizard a knight or uh, an elf or what you call a spellcaster everything that you find interesting you also get to choose a backstory and write a backstory for your character uh, depending on your liking whether it's a bad guy a good guy or something like that you get to choose the character's name it's like basically an rpg or a fallout game where you, you create your character you put description about your character uh, then you gather items and stuff um, Basically, it's just a board game, but it's an R It's like an RPG type of game uh, That's the thing I like about it the role-playing uh, Number two is the concept of it as uh, what you call a story based game So basically you can create a story based on the if you're the dungeon master you can create a story depending on your liking on your imagination so basically it could either be in a haunted house a castle a city a floating castle or a war in the middle of a war or there's different types of Dungeons and Dragons basically you don't even have to focus on Dungeons and Dragons itself sometimes it could be a zombie uh, RPG game because I've seen people create a Resident Evil uh, Resident Evil Dungeons and Dragons I've seen people create Star Wars Dungeons and Dragons. I've seen people uh, create a campaign for Star Trek, which was in Geek and Sundry's uh, Shields of Tomorrow uh, Dungeons and Dragons. I've seen a lot of styles. I've seen a lot of ways that they can portray a story, whether it's by art or role playing. And that's the thing about I like about this game is it's it's free. There is a freedom to it. You guys can create any story. From anything that comes into your head so it's really cool uh, one other thing that I love about the, about Dungeons & Dragons the third thing is watching people play it because you can you can definitely tell how uh, how people how good people portray the characters by just hearing them hearing or listening to their characters talk because it's a role-playing game so basically there are no visuals it's just voice and sounds whether the dungeon master uh, has sound effects or put sound effects in the game basically or how the dun dungeon master or how the DM or dungeon master uh, describe the scenery or the what you call describe the environment where the characters are where the heroes are standing at or where what's happening so basically there are no visuals it's basically pure imagination and the thing is you can definitely tell how good the story is by just listening to it and you can also uh, the the bad part about it is you can also tell whether the story is terrible by just listening to it for the first few minutes. I've watched a lot of Dungeons and Dragons campaign, and some or if not most of them were terrible uh, because of how terrible the characters portrayed the char uh, how terrible the character uh, the uh, the cast portrayed their characters, how terrible the DM uh, tells the story or. It's, it's just that the story is not interesting for me. 
I've watched so many people uh, play Dungeons and Dragons and only a few stand out or I find interesting to watch for hours and hours. Um, the f I, I can definitely tell you the first uh, Dungeons, and Dungeons and Dragons campaign or uh, what you call uh, the first uh, what you call Dungeons and Dragons game that I watch is quit or was Critical Role, uh, and I really love uh, the first time I saw it. It got me intrigued, and then when I started watching the previous episodes, and I watched uh, the what you call I started watching the previous episodes, and then learning the story, then understanding the mechanics of the game because there's a lot of rules and there's several books about it. That's when I I, I start to understand that. Um, this is how it works. This is how it's played, and this is uh, that's how I understand how the game works. And that's when I started enjoying the actual game, and of course the actual internet series of Critical Role. And then I started watching from episode one until the newest episodes when the newest episodes came out, which is episode 115. And then there's campaign two. But like I said, I still prefer the episode, uh, the campaign one, the first campaign. Um, what else? Uh, basically, it's a uh, another thing that I like about the game, or the fourth thing about I like about the game is the dice rolling. So basically, it's uh, even though the game is on a uh, decision base, so the uh, the story goes depending on how the DM wants it or how good the characters or the heroes in choosing their choices and uh, or picking their choices wisely. So basically the story goes or runs depending on the character's choice or basically how the DM uh, controls the actual story of the game. Uh, there's a freedom to it. and uh, But uh, one thing I like about the game is it's also pure chance. So that's because the character wants to go that way doesn't mean it's gonna succeed. Because there is a way to balance the game which is dice rolling. So the characters can either succeed on that certain task in order to beat a certain level or a, or a challenge or fail depending on their dice rolls. Of course, the number is based on the Dungeon Master's uh, what you call uh, choice. Whether it's a high, they, I, if the character needs to roll a high number or a low number in order to beat the actual task. So basically, there is a, a what you call a balance to the game. Uh, another thing is the story could uh, the fifth one thing the fifth thing I like about Dungeons and Dragons is uh, what you call there's a lot of stories uh, it's a free for all so if you're the dungeon master you could create any story uh, there are no limitations to it it depends on you and there are, you can play with as many people as you want, as uh, many friends as you can gather. Unfortunately, I only have a few friends who actually knows or even plays the game. Because most of them don't know what that game is. Because it's not very popular in my country. So, which is why it's very hard for me to actually start my own campaign. Because I don't know too many people who actually plays the game. That's the downside about, about this game. But, uh, it's actually free for all so you guys can create any story that comes into your head i think i already said that said this before but there is no limitations you can create your own monsters you can create your own npcs your own name it's like making a, your very own video game almost but in terms of uh, board games so that's the fifth thing i like about this game the sixth thing is uh as the dm you can put a twist or a certain plots in the story so basically uh, it depends on how you want the story to go or run. Sometimes the characters can become evil or sometimes the NPCs can become evil and they're, uh, depending on your liking, there could be plot twists. So it's like writing a, it's also li like writing a movie script almost. So uh, it's amazing. Uh, that's the sixth thing I, about, I like about the game. The seventh thing I like about the game is um, it's a concept where there are no visuals, but it uh, it's it uses your imagination. So everything you hear from the campaign, whether it's whether it's you making the actual campaign or you're watching people playing the game, uh, your imagination runs wild because it uh, your uh, the story is based on what they're saying and how the DM 
portrays the story and how the characters portrays their characters so basically it's just like uh it's like audiobook almost you're listening to it going back and forth and then you you just let your imagination run wild so basically there's there's there is no limitations to it so it's not based on what you see but mostly what you hear and you can definitely tell how good a story is by just listening to how the characters and the dm talks so that's the thing i about i about uh i like about this game is even though you're not seeing anything you're just seeing a bunch of people talk because there are other things uh, there are other ways that people can portray uh what you call create their dungeons and dragons campaign they can post pictures and sometimes they do animations and stuff but basically most of them involves talking so basically the that's the limitation about the game that you have to make the story interesting but at the same time you have to make sure that the viewers understand the story by just listening to it and not seeing too many visuals because it's a role-playing game Be Basically, it involves acting, and you have to get, you have to have a DM which is very good at storytelling. You have to gather many people who are very good at acting, or at least who are very good at portraying their characters, to make the story interesting. And you have to have a, what you call a very good concept to make this com uh, to make your campaign uh, what you call enjoyable for people to watch. Because there are no visuals; it is just by listening. So that's the thing I like about this campaign is it's a challenge almost but at the same time it makes you uh, use your imagination without boundaries but the only limita limitation is it th there are less visuals and more on audio or sound so basically you can use special effect or you could use not special effects but sound effects music and of course the way uh, if you're the DM the way you tell your story based on how you describe the actual adventure so that's the thing i like about this game and eight is everyone uh and the eight thing about i like this is everyone can play it there is no age gap there is no uh age limit all people can play it i've seen it done it i've seen that happen before i've seen younger people play it i've seen kids play it i've seen young adults play it i've seen old dudes with beards play it and it's weird but if the DM is very good at telling the story and the story is interesting, it's enjoyable to watch. It's weird when you're, you're just watching four dudes talk. But of course, that's not the point of it. It's the, the point is it's the actual story of the game and how the campaign is being portrayed by these people. So it's really amazing because it's pure imagination and yet there are no visuals for you to imagine it with it's just you thinking what's happening so that's basically it and um there's a lot of dungeons and dragons campaign uh, all throughout the internet uh, i've watched so many things just like i said there's critical role uh which is an amazing campaign it's one of my favorite it's probably number one of all if you're gonna be if you're gonna if you want to uh, what you call here a very a very good narrative in Dungeons and Dragons campaign critical role is one thing that I recommend you guys watching because it's amazing now not, not to mention that they're professionals because they're voice actors but how the DM which is Matt Mercer another voice actor portrays the story how how he creates the story and the adventure for these characters and everything about it is good the sound effects uh how the characters or the voice actors or the cast portrays their characters the story is amazing the plot twist there's a lot of plot twists there's a lot it's a it's like a mixture of emotions so that's probably one of my favorite campaigns that i've watched so far in the internet which is critical role there's also a lot of things there's dungeons and dragons um there's Dungeons and Dragons, uh, which is uh, another amazing campaign. Uh, it's DM by what you call I forget the name. Uh, I think it's DM by there you go, Chris Perkins, and it involves four characters uh, because in Critical Role it at least involves seven or eight of them. There's at least seven or eight of them, and this one has fewer characters, but it's still fun because of the plot twist and the story is amazing 
and there's all uh like i said uh on the, the one thing i like about this game is there are no um limitations to how many people can play the game and there are no limitations on how old people can play this game there are no age limit there's no gender limit uh there's been a lot of controversy that uh there's a lot of controversy that uh, girls should not play this game because they're not the type of people who actually likes game like this. It's like a, it's like a gender discrimination almost. But for me, as a person who started to love the game, I prefer people who actually have. Uh, when I'm watching a com a campaign, when I want when I'm watching a Dungeons and Dragons campaign, I prefer a campaign that has girls in it. Not because uh, it's uh, not because they're girls, but because it's interesting because of how the story runs. Because if it's just pure guys, uh, the story is focused more on what you call manlyhood and killing stuff and being strong. But sometimes, uh, the, sometimes the girl characters are emotional compared to male characters and that's what makes the story amazing because it's a mixture of emotions and sometimes um, the thing that I like about uh, what sometimes I prefer or most of the time I prefer games that have girls in it because uh, girls doesn't just focus on killing stuff or being tough and stuff but the story the emotions and how they react if something happens if, if their character dies or if one of their favorite character dies, if one of their favorite NPC dies, or if something emotional happens. Unlike uh, male characters, if uh, something emotional happens, they do not react as much as female characters. Uh, as for female characters, or our, our ca campaigns that have female casts in them, the emotions are much more greater when something tragic happens. They react. Uh, more uh, what you call interesting or more strongly to this certain emotions and that's what makes this story interesting is because you're like you're, you're like writing a script and you have to make sure that uh, things like this is balanced and things like this is interesting for your viewers or for those people who actually watch your campaign or listen to your campaign because you have to have emotions as well it's like writing a movie which is why I prefer uh, I prefer campaigns that have girls in them and I don't understand why a lot of people don't like girls playing their campaign uh, if I was the DM I would love to have girls in my campaign because it would make the story interesting other than a campaign full of dudes it would make it interesting if there's at least two or three girls in the campaign with a group of adventurers and that would make interesting because there could be romance one of so, uh, in Critical Role, I think two of the characters fell in love, which is incredible because it's a story. You have to make it interesting either way, whether it's, it's not just killing dragons and orcs, but also uh, it also involves creating these emotions to make this story interesting for people to watch and listen. So it's basically how you portray the actual game. So basically, I would, if I was a DM, I would like girls to join my campaign so that they can make the story interesting. For all we know, it could make the story even way better if it's just uh, other than a campaign with just a bunch of random dudes because girls are more emotional compared to guys. Well, some guys could be emotional compared to girls, but there's balance. So that's why I I would if I, I would if I would start a campaign I would do a mixture of boys and girls other than just boys or just girls. So I mean there are a lot of comp Dungeons and Dragons out there. There are Dungeons and Dragons campaign that it's all guys and uh, there's there's also campaigns that it's all girls like Girls Guts and Glory and there's a campaign where there's a mixture of both. And that's the thing about I like about this game is because everything is free. You guys could choose whether if you want to play with all guys or all girls or a mixture. There is no limitations to it. Sometimes girl characters portray male. Uh, sometimes girl cast portray portray male characters, or the other way around, where male cast portrays a female character. I've seen it happen before, and sometimes it's interesting either way because you can definitely tell how good a person portrays his or her character by just listening to them talk and how they make decisions for their characters 
and that's the interesting part about this game is it's based on imagination and there are no rules well there are but there's no limitation on how you want to expand the story and how you create it based on what you like so everything can happen inside and outside the back uh, outside the box which is really interesting for me and the only sad thing, sad thing about it is you have to play with people who not only know how to play the game but also enjoy the game itself and which is why it's hard for me to start my very own campaign in my channel is because I only knew few people who actually play the game. I, I, I did a live stream where I played with two of my friends, uh, one of which does not know uh, knows the game but does not know how to play it. He's very familiar with it. He heard of it and he's seen people play it but he hasn't tried playing it. Another one I've seen people who... Uh, another friend of mine is a video, uh, female video gamer and she knows the game but she hasn't played it as well. So you have to, as a DM, you have to what you call adjust on your characters and tell them how it is played based on how you portray the story to them. So basically, uh, it's really hard because you need people, in order to make, to play a game, play this game, of course you need friends. And you not only uh, need friends who know uh, who can play this game, but who can also be good at portraying their characters, is because that's how the story goes, uh, based on the characters' choices and based on how good the characters portray or how good the cast or your friends portray their characters. So yeah, pretty much that's why I love D and D. Um, and I have no regrets that I've discovered D&D &D and uh, I've watched Critical Role. It was amazing. It took hours and hours of watching the entire series, but it was worth every second. And it was an amazing experience because not only that I get to discover and explore another board, uh, board game, but I also, it's helped me as an artist or as a person who likes storytelling. It helped me, you know, uh, it helped me improve my imagination and help in terms of playing a board game which is really interesting so yeah uh, i would recommend you guys uh, if you guys don't know what dungeons and dragons is there's a lot of videos in the internet or, or across, across youtube and i watch you guys not even watch people how people play it but or uh videos that tells you how to play the game but watch other people play it watch critical role or watch other people play start their own campaign and then you'll get the gist of it you not only will you uh, understand uh, how it is played but also understand what is going on on this on their story on their campaign it's because there's a lot of campaigns out there a lot of adventures some people might be interesting than the others some people have their unique ways in portraying uh what you call critical uh portraying Dungeons and Dragons and how they portray their campaigns and uh, there was this campaign called uh, one thing uh, one new campaign that I'm currently watching is called Grave of Man D&D and there's only four characters and a DM so there's five of them sometimes there's three characters in a DM and only one of them is a female character but yet the story is interesting because there's a lot of things plot twists and a lot of things that you never knew would happen so basically uh, uh, basically, it's uh, I think the channel is Wonderbot and uh, the, the campaign is called Grave of Man DND. &D. Watch it, and it's uh, the thing is there's a different ways to portray. Uh, there's a different ways to show your story. Some people do role playing. Some people do figurines uh, because that's the basics of the game where you have dice and figurines. This one they use art. So basically, they create their own characters using Illustrate, Adobe Illustrator or Adobe Photoshop the, uh, or Adobe Illustrator and then uh, the DM not only portrays the story and tells the story to the characters but also designs the maps that the characters uh, run on or the characters go to. The maps, the, he designs the NPCs on scratch based on his imagination and how he portrays these characters. He designs uh, vehicles, he designs uh, uh, buildings and in interiors of buildings and characters and monsters. And sometimes he even asks his viewers to design characters for him to be used in the actual campaign. And of course, 
that would make it inter interesting because the char the story will go depending on what characters or what artworks he'll get from his viewers. And I actually submitted my own because I, I actually enjoy this campaign. So I, re I also recommend you guys watching it. Yeah, you might not enjoy it, but uh, because it's a, a different way of portraying the game, but it's interesting either way. So uh, it's called Grave of Man D&D. So watch it, please. Type it on YouTube, uh, or I will just leave it in the. Dis I would link all the links of or of all the campaigns that I watched in the past in the description down below if I remember them, uh, because there's a lot of them and some of them were amazing. So yeah, that's the one reason. I hope you guys uh, stick along with me. I'm really sorry if this was a very long conversation, but I hope you guys enjoy me uh, telling you guys why I love D&D. And if you guys haven't known, uh, if you guys don't know what D&D &D is, or if you haven't watched anyone play it, I recommend you do because it's a fun board game, and, and it's an interesting game to watch. And a lot of people are actually good at do, are playing and starting their own campaign for this type of board game. Uh, if you enjoy watching, uh, if you guys uh, what you call uh, know how to play this game and have watched people play it in the past, then good for you. And I hope you guys, uh, I hope I gave you guys good recommendations on what campaigns to watch, like uh, Grave of Man D and D. It's a good one. I enjoy it. Uh, it's a fun concept. And uh, if you guys, uh, let me guys know in the comments down below if you guys want to play with me. Uh, and, or if you guys want me to start my very own Dungeons and Dragons campaign, and uh, uh, and maybe I will. Who knows? In the future, if I gather as much friends as I can that knows how to play the game itself, and actually good characters, uh, and pretty much that's it. Hope you guys enjoy. If you guys enjoyed this video, leave a like. Don't forget, don't forget to subscribe now if you haven't. And as always, I will see you guys next time with another brand new video. This is the Cool Mike signing off. Goodbye.